beautiful day here in Santa Clara, California, and I'm with my buddy uh, Felipe. Hi. How's it going? And Pretty good. You're the partner of uh, Kiyoshi. You've been in business now for, it sounds like a few years working on this. About Is that... three years of development on this on these bikes right here, and uh, we're very excited to finally have them ready for It's your for first riding. bike. This is That's the first right. one, yeah, right? It's a big step, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's amazing. You know, I was getting some, some background, some feedback on these guys, and Kiyoshi is from Japan, mm -hmm. right? And you're from Mexico? Correct, yeah, born and raised. Okay, uh, and, and there's a mix here. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Right. Where were you born and raised? Where was the... Uh, Northern Mexico. Northern uh, Mexico. About an hour south of Tijuana, but we've both been in the U.S., me 15 years, him about 20 years, so we very much feel like this is home now. This is where we got to make an impact if we can. Well, there's a really interesting blend of cultures here. Um, it, it sounded like Kiyoshi's worked in the steel industry in the past, and, he, and he's familiar with... Uh, designing and, and building and using these types of materials. This is an aluminum alloy bike. Uh, and then you're bringing in, you know, I, so let me back up. The mm -hmm. name of the company is Ciro. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and that's Spanish, like Ciro, Ciro Emissions. Is that the, am that's I getting right. that right? It's the number zero in Spanish, Cero. And uh, or zero, as we would call it here, and essentially standing for zero emissions, which is what this vehicle aims to do uh, as, as, a, as a bicycle, as an electric bike. It's really cool. I like to get like there's a splash of color and a little bit of history about these bikes, especially because it's the first one. Uh, the bike comes in four different colors, so we're looking at this sort of a satin black, and then this gray over here. And I was asking you, like, is this gloss? Is it? Mm -hmm. It's not really matte. And you said you you went through a bunch of trials and you found like a 50-50. That's right. The the perfect balance ended up being a 50% matte, 50% gloss, meaning it gives us that nice matte sleek look uh, without being too too shiny, but also without being too matte that your fingerprints are going to get all over it. Awesome, so awesome. Hopefully it's uh, something that looks great. It, these guys have thought about a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about this bike because it's just so thoughtfully engineered and there are some obvious things. When you come up to it, you're like, okay, so what is this? It's a compact cargo bike and it's electric. So you get excellent assist. You can climb a little bit easier. You can manage some of the weight. The front wheel is smaller than the back wheel, so that's 26 inches. That's pretty standard, but these Big Ben uh, tires, they're a little bit thicker, so 2.15 inch diameter. That's going to give you some comfort, but it also increases the diameter a little bit, so it's going to span cracks, it's got a lower attack angle. That's what most bikes have, is like a 26 inch or 28 inch wheel. But well, So why is there a smaller one on the front? Well. It's going to turn and, and handle pretty quickly. It's actually going to be stronger because the diameter is smaller, so there's not as much tension on those spokes. And it allows you to get that front rack lower. Okay, and these racks are pretty impressive. Uh, Felipe was saying this is like 55 pound max weight. The rear is like about 75 pounds. And look at all these bosses. There's like 14 of them. And you can actually mount these, I guess you can, you can mount this one on top of that rear rack like this, or you can swap out the front rack. And this costs an extra $100 if, if you buy it straight away. Like we're looking at the gray one over here. See that, it just comes with the basket. The big basket is what they call it. They also have this small basket. And I love that they've got these Velcro. I'm assuming you, you can remove those and kind of wash them, or it's, it's just designed to be uh, a little bit more modular that way. Correct, it's a, it's a last little addition on this net. We figured uh, some people, especially on these baskets, might want to put, they're not always grocery shopping, they might want to put the small item. Puppies, maybe just, uh, you don't want puppies to <laughs> fall through, like the, yeah, and get their you toes pinched. You do not pinched. want puppies sliding through the cracks. Yeah. Uh, but wallets, keys, anything like that. Um, it's nice, it's nice to have that, especially because there isn't a bottle cage uh, adapter. Are, we, are you going to surprise me? What are you? I, I should mention. Maybe yeah. I forgot to mention this earlier. But uh, on the platform and on the big basket, where we were able to fit them, we put actually some uh, little mounting. Uh, Interesting. Right so you you might have to get like some spacers or something, but you do have the bosses or just longer it, screws. It will come. It will come with some spacers, 10 millimeter spacers, as well as the mounting screws. So wow. if you want to put a little pump or a, or a, or a water cage uh, for, for See, I told you these guys had thought of everything. Like <laughs> normally I'm kind of thinking, oh, right here, but then this is a mid-step design, easier to stand over. It's I got all the specs, you know, we've been studying this bike for the past maybe even hour, mm -hmm. which is longer than I usually spend. Um, and that's where I, I usually look for them. Some people put them below that, um, the down tube. I have seen them up on racks and I just didn't even think to ask. So I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for for clarifying that point. As I was saying, the racks are, are pretty capable. 75 pounds back here. This tubing, you can see that it's a little bit narrower and inset. That's so it can be yep seat compatible for, mm -hmm. for children. Now, this is what I was talking about. Okay, so the, the Japanese heritage, there's like these mama bikes or something. Tell That's, me about that. That is correct. And in, in, in designing this bicycle, uh, Kiyoshi-san, the, the founder of Sero, 
he wanted to bring the Mamachari or mom bike, which ah. is a, it's a quintessential Japanese bike, very practical, that uh, moms and dads too, to be fair, yeah. use in Japan uh, for transporting their kids, groceries. And uh, the idea was always to have a step-through bike that could do cargo and that was electric. Huh. Coming back to compact, uh, the overall length of this bike is about 72 inches, and that's including this front rack sticking out a little bit. The handlebars, they're relaxed, they sweep back, it gives you more of an upright body position and it, it allows for a lot of adjustment. You can see this Satori uh, Easy Up riser here. That's about 70 millimeters worth of rise and then there's zero to 90 angle on the Satori stem and that's, I think it's like a hundred millimeter length. So you can you can put it out far if you're someone who's who's tall and you have longer arms or you can bring it back and down if you're someone who's shorter. There's quite a bit of adjustment. There's one size, one frame size and I called it 18.5 inches because mm -hmm. uh, I did this little measurement right here to here. So the middle of the a crank arm up to the the top of that seat tube uh, 350 millimeters 30.9 millimeters on that seat post so you could also swap that out for like a seat post suspension if you wanted to improve the comfort this is a rigid frame and in part because i think that helps it to manage the weight you can see there's a top tube and a down tube protecting that battery it's it's going to be stronger you're not going to have the flex but you're also again you're trading a little bit of comfort and the, the big comfort uh, I guess compromise that makes it a little bit more approachable for me is you've got the ergonomic grips, the ergon saddle, and those 2.15 inch tires. And they do, they, you know, they give you some of that comfort. So there's always trade-offs with bikes, but I do like how, even though this is sort of compact compared to, uh, especially the bigger cargo bikes, the more mm -hmm. traditional long ones, it seems very capable to me. Uh, and even if you had to bring this saddle all the way down, it might block some of the, you know, a lot of times you slide the saddle forward too, but it is gonna take up a little bit of that rear rack. So like the length of this gives you a lot, there's a lot you can still do with this. Yeah, that was definitely something we did for this final version to extend the rack a little bit more. Uh, people could slide the basket uh, depending t on, on, you know, where they are on their saddle and, and bring it back. scoot it as back as... You probably wouldn't go on, yes. Yeah, you don't want to that's go probably that far good. back. But. <laughs> yeah, it's optimistic and I appreciate... Let, let's let's hit some of the other things here because there's more than just that, but which is custom. You said that the fenders are custom. They're, again, black, really blends in with this frame. They stand out a little bit more on the gray. They've also got a blue and a white. I like the white and, you know, maybe the gray. They just tend to be more visible and reflective if you're riding in the dark. But these do have reflective sidewall stripes. Schwabi is known for that. It also has puncture protection lining. They're also sort of tubeless ready. Um, and the PSI range is 30 to 55, so it's pretty good. You can lower it. It's a little less efficient when you do that, but you're going to get comfort. And you do have quite a range on this electric assist system. But before we get there, see the white accents on this frame? that's actually reflective paint. So you do have even a little bit more. That's sort of just a fancy, like, extra flourish of, of style slash safety. I appreciate that. The, the front rack, it doesn't turn when you steer. So earlier I was talking about stiffness and strength. It's important, you know, if you are loaded up, when you turn the bike, you don't want to dump the rack, especially if you actually have 55 pounds up here. And, you know, Felipe was kind of telling me earlier, well, we tested it up higher than that and it's it's doing okay. But, you know, for liability reasons, it's like 55 pounds. That's still, I mean, just look at how it's it's bolted directly to that head tube, which is extra long and tapered for stiffness. By the way, both wheels are quick release and this stem, you can actually swivel it. Can you show me how that works again, Felipe? Do the swivel thing. So you got a, a, an easy clamp here that allows you to do... Uh the, the extension. Yep. And if you raise it all the way up, you can actually twist the stem. Yeah, look at that. And, and it makes it, it narrower. Or either putting it on a car and saving a little bit of space, or uh, if you have a narrow hallway that you live in, that could uh, help out. Thank you. So the quick release on the wheels is another way that you could reduce the weight of this bike. It, it is a little bit more heavy. It's like 56 pounds, uh, but the battery's removable. It's about 5.8. This is very comparable to Bosch's Powerpack 500. So it is 36 volt, 14 amp hours. So 504 watt hours. You take that off, that's 5.8 pounds right there. And it does come from the side. Uh, and, and here are the keys. That, I was keeping these around because I wanted to show you this. This is the new battery pack. I haven't actually seen this one until now. See how it slides out from the side like that? Look at that, beautiful. It's protected when it's on the frame, and when it comes off, you know, you can charge it off the bike. Maybe you bring it up to your desk if you're using it as a commuting platform. The new charger doesn't have that extra dongle that I was always complaining about. It's just that one interface. So whether the battery is on the bike or off the bike, you charge it using that same thing. Just one fewer part to lose. And they made their charger, even though it's a little heavier, at 2.2 pounds versus Bosch's charger is 1.7 pounds. 
Uh, this is four amps. So just like Bosch, it's gonna be a little faster. It's big, it's kind of big, but you know, if you toss it in the, in the rack like that, and you know, I suppose I'd rather have something that's big and a little bit heavier that's gonna be reliable and safe. So many of the, the hardware and accessory choices on this bike are Shimano. Shimano steps mid-drive. Mid-drives are very efficient. They bring weight low and center and they empower you because as you shift through the 10 speeds on this bike, you can climb a little bit easier or hit the top 20 mile per hour max speed a little bit easier. It's all based on how you shift gears. And this offers up to 50 Newton meters of torque, which is good. It's not the Bosch CX. It's not like this mountain bike motor, but I, I haven't ever had a problem with this. Mid drives just tend to be very efficient. This one's a little quieter and it's very, very efficient in terms of range. With this battery, they estimate like 40 to 90 miles you know, I, I'm a little more conservative. I'm like, 35? You know, it all depends on how big you are, how much, how many puppies are in that basket. If it's windy out, are there big hills? You know, what's the deal? But with these more efficient tires, especially if you're running them a little bit higher PSI and you're shifting appropriately, you're gonna get great range. So there's the battery, it locks to the frame. It, it still has a little bit of a handle underneath, but it's not quite as easy to hold as the older Shimano battery, but it's still, I don't know, there's always compromises. And I, I think on this bike, especially the black, it blends in really nicely with the motor. Again, weight low and center on both of those. The same lock, because it's Abus, is used to um, lock and unlock this cafe lock or frame lock. It's an Abus shield. So a rod goes through the spokes here to keep people from just riding the bike away. They could lift it, but again, you know, 56 pounds is not light. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean they couldn't take your cargo stuff, but this is not different from any other uh, cargo bike or, or bike with a basket. Uh, Felipe, can you show me, th there's this extra chain lock that Abus sells right here. What's that one called? Yeah, uh, this one is a uh, uh, Abus chain extension. Yeah. And uh, it, it attaches directly here to the, the frame lock. They, they sell this accessory and uh, we'll be selling it as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always recommend, even though these, these type of frame locks are very popular in Europe and in Japan, yeah. um, uh, we do recommend, of course, that people uh, attach their their bicycle to a, a steady object uh, with whether yeah. they use a U lock or a chain lock, but this is one of the one of the options, and it's kind of mm. nice and clean. And wrap that around a pole. And to be honest with you guys, as cool as this is, it doesn't reach. Well, maybe it barely reaches. If you you know you'd have to wrap this around first and kind of run it through itself. Mm -hmm. But these are quick release quick release wheels, and. Uh, you know, again, you just don't want to come back and have your, your wheel missing. These are nicer tires. And look at the, the, the rims here. These are Alex rim, double walled. They have reinforcement eyelets. They've got uh, the spokes on this. That was, it was one of the interesting things. We were studying all the specs mm -hmm. and it's like 15 gauge rear, 14 gauge front. The, the lower the gauge, the thicker the spokes are. So again, a lot of strength up here and because of the smaller diameter, but maybe a little bit more flex and give. And you said your engineers had worked on some of the other popular electric cargo bikes and mm -hmm. came away with this like, well, a little bit of give isn't necessarily a bad thing because it means the spokes won't fail as easily. The classic bigger is not always better, they say. It, yeah. There seems to be a, a bit of a school of debate going on among engineers, but ours believe that uh, you don't necessarily need to increase the gauge that much. Um, they believe that there is a certain level in which you have enough strength but also keep the durability of the wheel uh, at, uh, at a good level. Which... Is there a max weight rating for the entire bike? Because we talked about like 55 pounds, mm -hmm. 75 pounds. What's the bike the, capable the, of? The current uh, rating, ISO rating is 270, but we're currently testing for heavier loads. So we should have those numbers by the time of, of launch. That's right. And you guys are doing a Kickstarter right now? Yeah, there's a pre-sale going on uh, through Kickstarter at the moment, but the production is already underway. So this mm -hmm. is not one of those uh, funded or not funded type projects. Okay, cool. Well, so it's neat that that, you know you, you've launched it there but that it's actually gonna happen and I can just tell from the frame that this is it's really well thought out and I should mention that I weighed the bike with the rear rack and the front rack and the fenders and everything you see here the battery so you can remove those racks if you wanted to I mean it would just turn it into a funky uh, like kind of a compact electric bike you'd still get the great range and everything uh, one one of the complaints I had, I, I love that they have integrated lights here. So we have a Spininga 2 LED headlight. It's aimable down. You can put cargo on top of this rack, but you know if you do, it's not going to block that light. And that's something that can happen if you have a handlebar mounted light. So anyway, coming back to this, two LEDs aimable. But when you steer the bike, 
the the light doesn't steer so that's when it's like okay just keep that in mind it takes a little bit of getting used to they also have a spinning rear light also wired in you can see the wires running through to uh, the extra wide plastic fenders i feel like they're they're pretty well reinforced you can see there's uh you know a strut here a strut here uh, a connection there and there. So that's four points. We'll ride. Sometimes plastic rattles a little bit more, but it's pretty durable. It doesn't bend the way aluminum does or rust the way that steel does. So back up here, can you help me out, Felipe, with the handlebars, kind of straightening those out again? Relieve the clamp. Yeah. Up, twist, and then down to your level. Let's of take comfort. it to like almost as the, the max height, because okay. I like this upright riding position. Now I should point out that this this uh, sample has a 70 millimeter extension, but the final version will be 100 millimeter. Whoa, okay, 100 millimeters. And he was also telling me earlier that there's going to be a couple of risers in there as well. Correct, an extra 10 millimeter based on a couple of extra uh, spacers here. Got all the numbers, man. Mm -hmm. And who makes this bell? Because it's a little flick bell? A Nuvo. Nuvo. It's, I it's see just it. the last little detail we decided to add. It's nothing fancy, but it, it should help. Nice to have. You know, a lot of creature comforts up here. Ergon, ergonomic grips, so your hands don't get numb. And, and that does take off. Even just the length of this bar takes off a little bit of the vibration. Uh, we've got the three finger hydraulic disc brakes from Shimano. 180 millimeter front. 160 millimeter rear. A lot of the stopping power does happen up front, but be careful with this. You've got a huge rotor with a relatively small wheel. So you're getting mechanical advantage, hydraulic power, and this extra big rotor. It's like, that, to me, that's almost overkill. Uh, but if you're loaded up, you do want to be able to stop. And so I feel like the brakes are like, you know, great. You can see that there are provisions here for a rear mounted kickstand, but I like that they went with this heavy duty center mount stand. It stows really nicely. And, and that's important for when you're loading up the bike. You don't want it tipping as you're carrying 50, 75 pounds worth of cargo. And check it out, they've got this little pulley wheel here that rise, it brings the chain above so it doesn't collide with the kickstand. One minor complaint I do have is that there's no slap guard on this right chain stay. So as you're riding, this could bounce down and collide and chip the, chip the pain. And it looks so nice. You know, I haven't seen any chips on this one or the other one. I don't know how hard they've been ridden. Uh, anyway, we've, we're coming back here to the actual drivetrain. This is Shimano Dior. It's a 10 speed or 10 sprocket setup, 11 to 42. That's that's huge. That's really wide. And then 38 teeth on the chain ring up here. Um, you know, it's interesting because I've seen these before where it sandwiches. It actually has a guide. So there's a plastic shield on both sides. This one only has a plastic shield on the outside, which will help your pants slough over this or maybe your dress. It does not have a chain cover. But if you look at the angle, you know, ho hopefully you're most of, mostly clear of that. And they've even got a cutout here on the fender. So I can't really speak to this. It'd be, you know, I haven't seen too many of the Shimano mid-drive setups with a chain cover. Um, but cleanliness otherwise has been really well addressed. I like the VP pedals. They're just kind of a plastic resin with this grip tape sort of surface, a little bit wider, integrated reflectors. It's just, it's neat to see this sort of thing versus the little cages that can kind of scrape you up if you slip. These might handle a little bit better, be a little bit more traction if you do get wet. Okay, so I think we're, I think we're, you know, all the way through the bike. Uh, the Shimano drive system is unique in that it's, it's a multi-sensor. So you can see there's a sensor over there on the left chainstay, a magnet. It's measuring your rear wheel speed, your pedal cadence, so that's how quickly you're pedaling or pedaling at all, and then your torque. So I mentioned earlier shifting through the gears to empower that motor, but you also want to be careful because the motor doesn't necessarily know that you're shifting. It's up to you to ease off a little bit and to reduce that torque so that the motor also backs off when you shift. Otherwise, you can end up going like kunk, 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 and you know, the, that's a lot in 50 Newton meters plus what you're doing. That's something to think about. So it is a little bit smarter, more fluid feeling. And then you do have those three levels of assist. So if you're in a low level of assist, it's not gonna be working as hard. You're gonna get better range. We can also see the wires here. They are not internally routed on this frame, but they are kept pretty clean along the base, kept out of the way. And then here's that wire for that headlight, which is removable. So now we're up at the cockpit. This is Shimano's new larger transflective LCD display. Love that it's also removable. Back to that commuting scenario where you get to work, you park the bike using the, you know, the frame lock and maybe a U-lock or something like that. You take this off, you take it with you and up to your desk and then, you know, no one can really tamper with your bike. This won't get scratched if someone else's handlebars tip into your bike. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it back on. Highly adjustable in terms of angle as well so you don't get a lot of glare. Hopefully this is, this is looking decent to you guys. Hold the power button for a couple seconds, comes right to life. 
And you can also go down here and there's sort of a power button LED indicator for how full the battery is. So this display is really unique because it actually has a few different like main readouts. Uh, if we press this black key over here, we can go from like speed, assist level, and then all these trip stats like average speed, max speed, distance, odometer, range, to like this multi thing. So it actually shows you the range in each different assist level. You could be riding along and be like, well, I've got 60 miles to go and I'm in high and it only says 52. So maybe I need to switch down to normal after, after a little while. It's really dynamic that way. So this system, very much like Bosch, is measuring how much battery capacity is remaining, uh, what your riding has been like over the past mile or two, and what assist level you're using. And it's dynamically doing that on the fly. It gives you a lot of good feedback as you arrow up or down with these gray keys, you know, it says which, which assist level you're using. So I went from off to eco to normal to high, and then it's giving me a beep like, that's as high as you can go, buddy. <laughs> and then there's this headlight button. So I just, I click that. It's super bright out, but I think you can still see. Yeah, I mean, that headlight is, I'm pretty impressed with that thing. I, I'm a safety nut, as you guys know. Um, we got the solo, that's just, it's on. Um, come back up, oh, and there was a good view of the transflective. See how, how bright that looks, even though the sun's shining directly on it? So in addition to being backlit, you get good visibility during the day. And if you want, you can hold the up and down keys simultaneously to enter settings. And this is so cool. I really love the Shimano settings area. So you can set your clock, your start mode, backlight, brightness, beep. That's something that I frequently turn off. It's off right now. If we turn it on, every time I press the button, it's gonna beep. So let's do that just for fun. Units, uh, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, language, uh, font color. Font color is cool. So right now, see how it's, it's black in the background and all the text is white? Well, you can change that. So now it's white in the background and the text is black. So depending on your scenario, if you're riding at night and you wanna like reduce how bright it is, or maybe you just have trouble reading one or the other, that's something that like no other display system offers. I mean, Shimano is really coming a long way, finally making their battery chargeable on and off the bike with the same thing, uh, adapter, finally getting up to the 500 plus watt hour, finally giving us a four amp charger. I mean, it's like win, like, I'm, I'm stoked. Good job, Shimano. Uh, and then just a few other readouts in here. I'm gonna exit this. See how bright the display is now? Because we changed that font color. And I'm gonna press uh, press that box one more time. And there we are. I also love that they give you battery percentage instead of battery like ticks, like five bars or 10 bars or something. It's just much, much more precise. And that can matter, you know, when, when you're really going the distance. I think that is, that's pretty good. I might just hop on this thing, ride it around, give you a feel for you know, what it sounds like while we're riding. I'm gonna take these keys off so they don't rattle around. Uh, Felipe, what have I missed? Is there anything else you wanna say about this bike? I think you covered all the bases pretty well, Cord. So Felipe volunteered to hop on this bike. I always like to show what it looks like third person. So he's just gonna ride around for a minute and uh, I'll, I'll chase you. Awesome, super quiet. Okay, now it's my turn. Hop on this thing. There's the kickstand completely stowed. Does a good job staying clear. I'm gonna start in the grass, and of course, I'm gonna start in high mode. A little bit of fender rattling, but we are in grass. So from here, you should be able to see a little bit of the drivetrain, hear the motor, see how quickly it starts and stops. It's pretty efficient that way. And maybe even some of the steering and the basket, just another viewpoint. Definitely stops quickly. It's nice to see. And you can hear the motor getting higher pitched and louder as I switch down the gears to lower gears and pedal faster. And that's pretty common with these mid drives. And this is kind of handlebar view as we cruise along. I might even aim it down so you can see the basket. Let's make a turn. 
turn here. Super tight, no problem. That's really nice when you're loaded up with gear. It's the cockpit view. There we go. Feeling pretty stable. Those smaller wheels, they're a little twitchier, which allows for nimble steering in tight conditions. You can turn the bike around much more easily without doing a multi-point turn. Oh yeah. Man, you can really feel that front disc brake. It gives you plenty of power. I stopped with my left hand, no problem. And we also hit our max assisted speed of 20 miles per hour. I didn't even have to shift gears. Oh boy. So we just hit uh, a bigger crack in the sidewalk and I could definitely feel it. Um, it wasn't terrible, but you know, again, there's, there's really no suspension on this. I imagine the bike would be quite a bit heavier if there were. hit this curb here. And I like how wide the bars are. Just really relaxed body position. And there we go. The motor faded out at 20. whining a little bit more at that top assisted speed um, you know it's not terrible it's definitely one of the quieter uh, e-bike drive system out there and and lighter the Shimano system the motors is much lighter one of the other benefits of a smaller front wheel is that it keeps that fender really clear of your foot so when you're pedaling if you're turning hard you're not gonna you're not gonna collide as you do on some some others and then again just being able to turn the bike and spin it that easily to get to wherever you need to go. We talk about the torque rating on some of these bikes, uh, like the Bosch Performance CX. That has 75 Newton meters of torque, or the Broza mid-drive says 90 Newton meters, whereas this is only 50. So I wanted to try to demonstrate, you know, there's a tiny little hill here, but it, there's grass, so it's gonna be tougher. I'm gonna go really slow and just listen to that motor. It's actually doing it's actually doing fine. I'm in high and you can see the power. There's that little graph and it's kind of surging here as it's really working, but I'm gonna to try to come up this side. And this time, instead of being in a lower gear, I'm gonna be in a harder gear. I'm really gonna push that motor just to simulate climbing something really steep or having a really heavily loaded bike. What I found is that the motor stutters a little bit. It kind of, it's trying, but it just doesn't quite have that same oomph that the other ones do. And again, I don't wanna freak you out. I'm trying to be honest about the differences and stuff, but I'm really pushing this motor and they, at some point, they also sort of stall. Uh, so anyway, here's what that would be like. Shift into a higher gear. There we go. Going down the hill and now up the hill. And it just quit. It just, it goes like click and then that's it. To protect itself, I think. Um, and again, I'm forcing this, this stall here. But I did want to demonstrate what might happen if you're really putting this bike under pressure and if you don't shift appropriately. You know, coming back here, I am in a uh, higher gear, certainly not the highest, but when you're starting from zero, you know, at some point the motor just quits. There we go. So it just quit and it'd be up to me to kind of keep pedaling for a minute. I almost have to reset it. There we go. And now we're back up. You can see the power starting to drop down a little bit more now that it's smoothed out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm glad to be back in the shade. I had a fun time riding this bike around. I mean, it's really, it's really unique. Like it incorporates a lot of the strengths that I've seen in other compact bikes, 
cargo bikes and, and the price isn't too bad we haven't really mentioned the price yet right? that's right you want to tell me what is it yeah the bike will retail at uh, 3399 on this uh, base model with the flat platform okay and then you can upgrade to either that small basket with the liner or the big basket uh with the liner as well for yeah. 50 or 100 dollars respectively. respectively yeah and if you want additional racks because that yeah. that's like replacing these so if mm -hmm. instead of the front rack you want the big box hundred dollars but if you want a big box up front and an additional big box for that separate rack well that's two hundred dollars for them for the next one correct we also sell uh, all of these baskets separately uh it starts at a hundred dollars for the flat platform 150 mm -hmm. for the small basket and 200 for the big basket uh, both of which as you mentioned are mountable in the uh, rear and the front with just some um, uh, bolts quick bolts i love how modular it is that way and the racks are all black and everything so of course we're looking at the black and everything looks perfect mm -hmm. the other colors i mentioned is the white the blue the gray and so the black accents they still look pretty good in my opinion you know we come back over here and um yeah it's it's a handsome looking bike and even though you guys are relatively new knowing that you've been around for a few years and also that you have this two-year comprehensive warranty mm -hmm. is is reassuring where are you based uh, based out of Los Angeles. Okay. Oh, we almost forgot. That's like, correct. check this out. Okay. So I was asking Felipe, I'm like, why is this one? See, the logo's here on the down tube versus the other one. It was really minimalist. And I kind of like that. These aren't like super flashy, but this one has more personality to it. And you can see on the inside of uh, the fork arms right there and the inside of the seat stays, the chain stays, there's this like grid looking stuff in light green. And tell me about that. What was it? Yeah, the, the, these are maps of Los Angeles, yeah. actually. These are areas that actually exist uh, in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, just a little Easter egg, a little little fun detail. That's really cool. Representing where we're from, one of the cities with the worst traffic, so yeah. what better ra way to ride them in than passing through traffic. That is cool. It's always fun to meet with like the people behind the company. Sometimes, you know, I'm meeting with like a big company and it's it's like a marketing rep. They don't really know what's going on. This has been really fun. Thank you so much, Felipe. Appreciate it, Corey. And, Thank you And uh, yeah, I'll be in touch with you guys for the full write-up on these bikes, including all the details and other measurements I've done, like reach, standover height, that stuff. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun out there, especially in LA. Ride safe.